Hello there, thanks a lot for dropping by part two of PosterCentral.com's Elvis Presley 1954 concert ticket video blog. How's that? <laughs> uh, this is Pete Howard, and um, you know, if you haven't seen part one yet, definitely go over and see that first, because then everything will tie together nicely. So, yep, even though this ticket just says Slim Whitman, it was Elvis Presley's first ever appearance on a concert stage in his life. July 30th of 1954, Elvis was 19 years old, and his first Sun single had been out for only about 10 days. Now, you Elvis fans will know that this acclaimed biography by Peter Guralnik, Last Train to Memphis, spends two and a half pages on just this show. You know, given its historical importance, that's not surprising. But it's just a terrifically fun account of how nervous Elvis was and how, you know, it was a hillbilly crowd that night. How would he be accepted? Just how uncertain everything was. In fact, guitarist Scotty Moore has quoted as saying that Elvis's knees were knocking so loud you could hear them. Wow. And uh, the account here in the book even has quotes from Elvis himself, who says, quote, It was my first big appearance in front of an audience, and I was scared stiff. In fact, the local crowd was whipped into such a frenzy that Scotty says that Elvis thought maybe they were making fun of him instead of cheering him. Holy cats. And they did just, you know, they're only, the only songs they knew, right? That's all right. Then Blue Moon of Kentucky, and when they were called back, they simply did, for an encore, Blue Moon of Kentucky again, all as the total opening act for the evening. You know, the book also paints a nice picture of just who was in attendance at this show. Well, you had his parents, of course, Gladys and Vernon, and naturally, <laughs> the most likely of all, his girlfriend at the time. There you have Dixie Locke. And by the way, none of these three photos are from 1954. They're all from a year or two later. And a couple of more people that were, of course they were theirs. Sure, you've got, of course, Sam Phillips of Sun Records there on the left, and Elvis's future manager, Bob Neal, on the right. Bob Neal would take over Elvis's management about five months after the show at the very end of 1954. This was way before the era of Colonel Tom Parker. So here's an interesting question. Is this the first concert ticket in rock and roll history? Huh? Well, of course, there's a never-ending debate about what was the first rock and roll song with plenty of great post-war black R&B musicians vying for that honor, and justifiably so, or even Bill Haley and his comments with Rock Around the Clock. But very few of those events back then actually used, you know, hard tickets. There were just lots of club shows and everything like that. And there's no record of a landmark event with any of those musicians that you can really hang your hat on for like a first ticket. But wait a minute, there is this. From 1952, two years earlier, and the famous and seminal Moondog Balls, presented by Alan Freed in and around Cleveland, Ohio, back in the early 50s. And this was the first one, again 52, an all-black lineup of rhythm and blues hitmakers, including Paul Williams, famous for his hucklebuck, and the Dominoes. So yeah, this is frequently cited, you know, by historians as the world's first rock and roll concert, but it didn't really occur or take place. Um, due to a printer's error with the tickets, and then tons of counterfeits as well, thousands of extra people showed up outside the hall to try to get in. So, you know, riots almost broke out when they couldn't, and wire reports say that, uh, you know, the show was halted and then canceled by police after just one song. Wow, so when is a concert not a concert? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at the ticket here, not just the poster. Um, and here you can see it does say Moondog Coronation Ball on there, March 21st, in the city of Cleveland itself, and again the year 1952. Now, of course, you know, Moondog fans might, you know, they want to point to the Elvis show and say, well, that was just three songs. How can you knock us or eliminate us for being just one song? And I suppose Elvis fans would then say, well, at least ours was a complete concert, <laughs> and yours was halted and canceled. So, I suppose the debate will always rage on. So, this marvelous collectible has one more giant surprise to it, and it has to do with the other side. 
Any guesses? Oh my goodness. Oh man. That's right. The musicians were set up to greet and give autographs after the show. And one Kathleen Wilkinson states in her notarized account, After the show, we were first in line for autographs. Lots of laughter. Elvis had to borrow a pen. First time nerves. Wow. Let's take a closer and look with a blow-up. Love and thanks, Elvis Presley. Oh my goodness, holy cats, wow. With the pen skipping just a little bit, as you can see, between the S and the L, and in the loop of the Y. Now that plays into, remember back in part one, I showed you a little blue ink squiggle on the front of the ticket. In fact, here it is again, above the word show. See that there? Well, somebody, most likely Elvis, was simply trying to get the pen to work so that he could autograph the back of the ticket. Oh my goodness. So, wait a minute. She said she was in first in line for autographs after the show, right? Well, yep, that would also make this Elvis's first ever autograph as a concert performing entertainer. Oh my gosh, absolutely mind-boggling, right? Just amazing. It's, it's a double-sided threat. Both sides are killer. Oh man, this is just so awesome. Wow. Well, I hope you certainly have enjoyed this incredibly fun and historic item. I certainly have, which is why I made a two-part video. Just amazing. So, my next videos, my next few, won't be as, you know, historic or unusual or rare or whatever. They can't be. This one tops the cake, but hopefully we'll have some more fun going forward. Ah, thanks a lot for dropping by. Take care, and we'll see you again for something soon. Bye-bye.